Please read us a story on there. We'll all gather round. Dear old man, sit in your favorite chair. We'll sit all around. All around, dear old man. All the toys were playing quietly when Little Bear came into the room carrying what looked like a little table made of wooden glass. What is it? asked Duck as Little Bear put the strange object on the floor. I don't know, said Little Bear. It's got sand inside the glass bubbles, but I can't see how you get it out. Perhaps it's spare sand for the sand pit, said Zebra. Bramwell laughed. It isn't sandpit sand, he said. It's sand that tells you the time, like a sort of clock. But it hasn't any hands, said Little Bear. Or numbers, muttered Duck. It doesn't need them, said Bramwell. Look, I'll show you how it works. Carefully, he turned the object upside down. The toys watched as a trickle of sand began to pour through a little hole from one glass bubble to the other. It's called an egg timer, announced Bramwell. The sand takes exactly four minutes to go from one end to the other, and that's how long it takes to boil an egg. So if you watch the sand, you know when the egg is ready. Is an egg ready now? asked Little Bear. I'm rather hungry. I don't think it's tea time yet, said Bramwell. Why don't you go and ask Old Bear what time it is? Little Bear found Old Bear with his ear pressed against the old clock in the hall. Shh, said Old Bear. I'm listening. I just wanted to know if it's tea time, whispered Little Bear. I don't think so, said Old Bear. But I don't really know because, he listened once more, the clock seems to have stopped. Oh dear, said Little Bear. Then I'd better fetch the tools for you to mend it. Old Bear was just about to say that they might not need the tools, but Little Bear had already hurried away. Little Bear soon found the wooden toolbox, and all the toys helped him drag it to the hall. But when they arrived in the hall, Old Bear was nowhere to be seen. I wonder where Old Bear has gone, said Little Bear. Shall we surprise him by mending the clock ourselves? I'll have a look at it if you like, said Bramwell. He opened the front of the clock and examined it closely. Hmm, he said thoughtfully. I think we'll have to take it apart. Could I have a screwdriver, please? Duck pulled one from the toolbox and handed it to Bramwell. Carefully, he pushed the screwdriver behind the clock hands, then gently eased them off and handed them to Little Bear. I see what's wrong, cried Little Bear. This hand must be broken. It's much shorter than the other one. No, laughed Bramwell. They're meant to be like that. Listen. I could hear a funny noise. The bit that has gone wrong must be behind here. And he tapped the face of the clock. Bramwell and Rabbit lifted down the clock face and propped it against the wall. Now we can see what we're doing, said Bramwell, peering inside. That spring looks a bit wobbly. I'll see if I can tighten it. He poked it cautiously with his screwdriver. But all of a sudden, it sprang out of the clock, followed by big cogs, little cogs, screws, and all sorts of other bits and pieces. Help! cried Little Bear. The clock is exploding! Everyone dived for cover as the insides of the clock rolled and bounced all over the hall. Oh, no, said Bramwell. I can't look. Now what are we going to do? said Rabbit, picking up one of the cogs and turning it round in his paw. Old Bear isn't going to be very pleased. He put the cog on its end and turned it fast. It spun round and round and then whizzed across the floor. Oh, they're spinning tops, cried Little Bear. Can I have a go, please? Soon the floor was covered in wobbling tops, spinning this way and that, bumping into each other and whizzing around the hall. Suddenly, Bramwell picked up his spinning cog. Stop, he called. Old Bear's coming back. I'm sorry, said Little Bear, as Old Bear arrived from the kitchen. Uh, we tried to mend the clock for you, but it exploded. Oh dear, said Old Bear. I think it only needed winding up. I've been looking for the key, but I couldn't find it. I know where there's a key, said Little Bear, in the clockwork mouse. That won't fit, grumbled Duck. 
Mice are much smaller than clocks. Well, it's worth a try, said Old Bear patiently. Come on, everyone. Let's get this clock back together again while Little Bear looks for the key. Little Bear found the clockwork mouse under the sofa and wound it up to see whether the key still worked. It worked so well that the mouse whizzed round in a circle and across the floor at top speed. Come back! cried Little Bear, wishing he hadn't wound it up quite so much. He chased the mouse round and round in circles and backwards and forwards across the room. Just as the mouse was about to go back under the sofa, Little Bear made a giant leap and caught it by the tail. The toys were just putting the clock face back on when Little Bear arrived with the clockwork mouse key. Here you are, Old Bear. Will this work? Old Bear tried turning the key. It's moving a bit, he said, but it's very hard to turn. Can we all have a go? asked Rabbit. We could each turn it just once. First Bramwell turned the key. Then Rabbit. Then Duck. Then Little Bear. Finally, Old Bear held his breath and gave it a big twist. If it wasn't broken before, it certainly is now, muttered Duck. You've overwound it. I think it's just the wrong key, said Old Bear. It slipped. <sighs> what are we going to do, sighed Little Bear. We'll never know when it's tea time now. If only clocks could talk, he added. It could tell us what's wrong. Suddenly, he pressed his ear against the clock. I can hear something, he cried. It's ticking. It isn't ticking, said Duck. It's tapping. Do clocks usually tap, asked Little Bear, and he rat-a-tat-tatted on the clock case. Rat-a-tat-tat, said the clock. Everyone stepped back. It answered me, whispered Little Bear. It's trying to tell me something. Probably that it's tea time, muttered Duck. It's coming from in here, said Bramble, pointing to the door at the bottom of the clock. Very carefully, he opened the door and out stepped Mr. Doll from the Doll's house. Oh, at last, he said. I wondered when you'd hear me. Was it you tapping? asked Little Bear. We thought the clock was trying to tell us something. I was trying to tell you something, laughed Mr. Doll. I wanted to tell you that this is what you need to start the clock. And he held up a large metal key. It's kept in here, and I was just about to wind the clock when the door shut and I couldn't get out. I am sorry, Mr. Doll, said Bramble. We were so busy trying to mend the clock, we didn't hear you. Very carefully, Old Bear twisted the clockwork mouse key and pulled it out. Then he put in Mr. Doll's big key and turned it one, two, three times. They all stood very still and listened. Tick, tock, tick, tock, tick, tock. It's working! Hooray! cried all the toys. But we still don't know what the real time is, said Duck. Mr. Doll put his hand in his jacket and pulled out a tiny pocket watch. I think you'll find this is exactly right, he said, and he gave the watch to Old Bear. Old Bear turned the hands of the clock, first the big minute hand, then the small hour hand. The clock began to chime. It's four o'clock, cried Little Bear. This time the clock is telling us something. What's it saying then? asked Duck. That it's tea time, laughed Old Bear. And about time, said Little Bear. I'm starving. Do you think I could have an egg for my tea? You can, laughed Bramble, if you don't mind waiting another four minutes for it to cook. <laughs>